In this video, I will solve problem 2.7 from our textbook, Mechanical Vibration from Rao 6th edition. Here in the figure, we see three springs and a mass that are attached to a rigid weightless bar PQ. We like to find the natural frequency of vibration of the system. This is a system of only one degree of freedom. I will describe my degree of freedom with a variable x of the mass. Of course, I will have other variables like, for example, the displacement of q that I will call y. And I need that to describe the relative displacement of the ends of spring k3. I will solve this problem using the equations of motion of the Newton's law. For that, I will draw the free body diagram of the bar and the free body diagram of the mass in a generic position. Let's start with the free body diagram of the bar and the free body diagram of the mass. For the bar, I have two reactions at P, PY and PX, and then I have the forces of the spring. Here we see that this and is fixed, so I have a force going upwards, the force of the spring one. Then I have a force going also upward, spring of the force two. And then I have a force of spring three. Depending on the assumption that I do, let me do the assumption that x is greater than y. Therefore, if x is greater than y, this spring will be in tension and it will pull the, the bar downwards. I could have assumed the opposite and then the force will be uh, upwards, but it's very important that I stay consistent. So for action and reaction, I will have the force of the spring three and I have the weight. So I am assuming a rotation of theta in the clockwise direction. So here I see that I have a, here a displacement that I will call x1, this will be x2, and this I said that is y. And this here, I have the variable that measure my degree of freedom, the motion is x. Remember that the mass of the block is m, and this bar is, the mass is equals to zero because it's a massless bar. Since I have to express all the motion in only one variable, I will find relations between x1, x2, y, and x. For that, I will use similar triangles. For small vibrations, I will be able to say that sine of theta is equal equals to theta, and cosine of theta is approximately equals to 1. This is L1, this is L2, and this is L3, right? So I will be able to say that L1 sine of theta is equals to x1, L2 sine of theta is equals to x2, and L3 sine of theta is equals to y. From here, since I am assuming sine of theta to become theta, I will say that L1 theta is equals to 1, L2 theta is equals to x2, and L3 theta equals to y. From here, theta can be expressed in terms of y as L over L3, I will put everything in terms of y, just to relate it to the block. Therefore, I have also x1, it will be equals to l1 over l3, y. So I just include this one over here, right? And then I have x2 equals to l2, y over l3. Now let's do the forces. The force of the spring 1 is equals to, of course, k1, and the deflection at that point, which is x1. In terms of what I just calculated, 
that will be L1, L3, Y. Then I have the spring 2 will be K2, X2. But I already said that X2 is equals to L2 over L3, Y. And finally, the spring 3 will be equals to K3. And that's very important is the difference between the two ends of the spring. That will be X minus Y. Now let's do finally the equation of motion of the bar. And for that, I will take moment at P that will be equals to L1 cosine of theta, which is this distance, times the spring force 1 positive L2 cosine of theta, spring 2, and the last moment is negative, L3 cosine of theta is S3. If I substitute, and remember this can becomes 1, this becomes 1, and this becomes 1, this is equals to 0 because we have mass less bar, so we don't have any kinetic moment. So this becomes L1, and the force of the spring 1 will be K1 L1 over L3, Y plus L2, and the force of the spring 2 is K2 L2 over L3 Y minus L3 K3 X minus Y equals to C. From this expression, I will find a relation between X and Y. So let me solve for Y. So let me just write my equation. And this minus times minus becomes positive, this is y, and that will be equals to L3 K3 X. I can write then that y is equals to K3, I'm going to write it like that, L1 square over L3 square K1 plus L2 square over L3 square K2 plus K3. Now I will do the equation of motion of the mass. For that, I will add forces in the vertical direction, and that will be equals to the force of the spring 3 minus the weight is equals to negative the mass times the acceleration. And the force 3, we know that is K3 X minus Y minus the weight equals to negative x two dots. So what I'm going to do here to have everything just in terms of x, I'm going to substitute what I found for an expression of y. If we do the algebra, we get that this is equals to mx two dots plus k3 k1 l1 over l3 squared plus k3 k2 l2 over l3 squared all divided by that denominator and the denominator is k1 l1 l3 squared plus k2 l1 over l3 squared plus k3 all that multiplied by x, and this is equals to the weight, which is a constant. Now we were asked to find the natural frequency. The natural frequency is defined as the constant of the swing equivalent over the mass equivalent. This is the constant of the spring equivalent, and this is the mass equivalent. So if we write those terms, we will have that our natural frequency is 1 over mass times the constant of this. And this is our natural frequency for the system. So here we find the total solution for our problem using the equations of motion.